Welcome to this video about this DIY axial flux motor with off-the-shelf parts. The stator consists of windings that are wound around spools. These spools are held together by 3D printed parts. I have a copy of the 3D printed part right here. In the middle there is space for a bearing and on the outside there is space for the spools. The spools are made from weld nuts. I bought the cheapest ones, but they were a bit crooked, so I recommend you buy some higher quality ones. These are held back to back with a piece of threaded rod. The rotor consists of two steel discs, one on the top and one on the bottom, with magnets mounted on the side of the stator. These are mounted in alternating polarity. The steel discs ensure the reluctance is kept low. These are bound together by the shaft and two 3D printed parts that you can see right here in the center. My design uses six concentrated windings and eight magnets on each disc. This is one of the possible configurations. You can find a link to a website with the possible configurations in the description as well as the CAD files. My initial plan was to drive this motor with a cheap standard ESC because the working principle is the same as a BLDC motor except for the flux direction. Because of how I wound this motor, the KV is very low. Such ESCs are not capable of driving low KV motors, so I'm now using an outdrive in closed loop control with a magnetic encoder on the bottom. The outdrive will also be able to show the real potential of this motor much better compared to a basic ESC. For version 2 of this motor, there are some things I want to change. The mounting of the rotor discs needs to improve. This includes a smaller air gap between the rotor and stator. Because this was just a proof of concept, the spools holder had a very basic design. I want to improve the overall ease of assembly and disassembly. With the new design, I will be able to do some more tests than just spinning the motor, so subscribe if you want to see that happen. I also don't know if I want to keep using off-the-shelf parts for V2. That was it for this video. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.